page is recovered and everything else you're entitled to. Call John Foy and Associates now. Let's see where it takes us. starting to move in and the showers are soon to follow. I'll have all the details on what you can expect for your Sunday forecast coming up. Now on Good Morning Augusta, the Democratic presidential primaries kicked off in the Palmetto State for the first time. We'll break it all down for you. Plus three finalists in the AK County Schools superintendent race finally meet with the community. What they plan to do if hired. And we'll hear the inspiring story of a woman born with HIV. Her message ahead of Black HIV Awareness Day. Your number one source for local weekend morning news starts right now. Live from Television Park, this is Good Morning Augusta on WGBF News Channel 6. Well, good morning, sunshine. Thanks for joining us. It's great to be with you. I'm Sean Gavichstock. Coverage you can count on begins with the South Carolina State taking on Trump was the commanding lead in the polls. He has yet to visit South Carolina to campaign, but he plans to speak at a black conservative gala in Columbia on February 23rd. That's the day before the Republican presidential primary. One person is dead following a house fire in Augusta. The Department of Public Safety responded to the house fire on Tiger Lily Circle. When it was out, first responders found a body inside of a man. The Aiken County Coroner's Office will conduct an autopsy just to find out his identity. The Sheriff's Office is investigating the cause of the fire. The Richmond County Sheriff's Office still asking for your help finding a missing man. He's 45-year-old Kendall Brown. He was last seen Sunday at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church on Lumpkin Road. Authorities say he may have possibly left his home on Patriot Drive over in Hepzibah between January 30th and February 2nd and is possibly endangered. Contact the Sheriff's Office if you know anything. The Aiken County Schools getting closer to selecting a new superintendent. King Lawrence will retire at the end of the school year, but Saturday the community got together to meet the finalists. Here's Graham Lee. There are three finalists for the big job. Since King Lawrence announced his upcoming retirement, the school board is preparing for the move. Districts change. The di you know, the environment we were in in 2020 when we hired Mr. Lawrence was a different environment with different needs than it is today. The candidates got to stand before the public to share about themselves and their vision if they were to be hired. Each of them say it's a golden opportunity to make a difference. When you're called to do the work that's in front of you, you bless people in the process on the journey. That's why I love being a superintendent and I will continue to be. I will ensure that every student has what they need to be the best they can be. I will make certain that every teacher has what they need to be the best they can be. I will continue to inspire district and school leaders to encourage high quality and engaging teaching and learning. I will continue to build on the stalwart leadership of King Lawrence to push the boundaries of public education. I will be ready from day one to take over and with your support, continue the work to maximize every child's potential in a safe and nurturing learning environment. They demonstrated through their resumes, experience, uh, previous interview, that they're qualified for this job, and I think they showed us again today uh, that any one of them could be our next superintendent. The last interviews will be next Tuesday, and the next superintendent will be selected shortly after that. In Aiken, Graham Lee, WJBF, News Channel 6. And meteorologist Sherry Sheely joins us now for a quick check of the forecast. May need a light jacket today and in here, too. <laughs> yes, chill. it is a little yes. bit chilly. <laughs> and then later on this afternoon, going to need a rain jacket. Uh, okay. <laughs> All the jackets handy. But right now, though, it's just some clouds building in, as we can see on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam. So beautiful sunrise there outside of Television Park. But definitely can see those clouds starting to build in this morning, where yesterday we had the all clear. Clouds are moving in now. Temperature-wise, yes, on the cool side, 40 degrees here in Augusta, but to our north, even cooler. So where the cloud cover is located more so to the south as those clouds are moving in, have those warmer temps, but to the north, 32 degrees in Saluda, where the clouds are a little bit thinner. Also, another concern is the winds. Right now, not too shabby, but they will pick up as we go through the afternoon hours and into your Monday. Right now, still coming from the northeast and picking up, looks like between 
about five to 10 miles per hour right now. But moving forward, we do have those winds picking up. We do have a lake wind advisory that will be in effect from four o'clock this afternoon through seven o'clock Tuesday morning for the counties there in gold. So keep that in mind, could have some gusts up to 35 miles per hour. Satellite and radar, there's that looming next weather maker. So we're kind of wedged in between two pressure systems. And as that moves from the south end, we will see those rain showers move in this afternoon. So planning out your praise planner this morning. If you're in those southern line counties, you might want to grab that rain jacket as they might move in if you have later services towards lunchtime. But definitely going to need that jacket as we're chilly in those 30s to 40s this morning for us. So your forecast at a glance this morning going to be on the cool side. Just see the increase in clouds. But then we do have those showers moving in this afternoon. So coming up in your full forecast, I'll discuss the timing of when you can expect these showers to move in and the forecast for the week ahead all coming up. Sean? Alrighty, Sherry, thank you. Emoja Village in Aiken is hosting its third annual Black History Month community celebration. It will start at three over at the Leslie B. Price Senior and Youth Center. South Carolina Representative Gilda Cobb Hunter will be there. The program showcases music, praise dancing, and several award recognitions. And be sure to tune in to our Black History special, Joy D. Arenetta, on Thursday, February 22nd at 7 o'clock, right here on News Channel 6. We're celebrating Black Excellence 365. We'll show you how the Big 7 Association uplifts Cornwell County through sports, scholarships, and a whole lot more. Details next. Black Excellence. Sarah R. Williams, call to schedule your appointment today. Rhonda Vincent and her band The Rage will close the Morris Museum's Budweiser True Music Southern Soul and Song Series on Friday, February 9th. Tickets start at $20. Buy them at the Imperial Theater. Man, I just love that Southern Soul and Song. WJBF News Channel 6's Black Excellence 365 recognizes inspiring black individuals and organizations here in the CSRA all year round. Recipients are honored with the Mario Jones Black Affirmation Award, and this month, we honor the Big 7 Association in Barnwell County. We had a determination to keep on doing what we wanted to do to make this cute community a better place. Founded by seven softball coaches and managers in 1989 at the Diamond Dale Community Softball Field in Barnwell County, the Big 7 Association began with a vision. We met in the dugout. Out there and say, hey, you know, let's go this direction. What y'all think about it? And Bob said, hey, yeah, you know, we for that. So that's how we finally came up with the Big Seven. Starting with a focus on sports, the organization expanded to include youth programs, senior citizen initiatives, and scholarships. To give our kids a chance to, um, to, um, to, to be productive, um, to, get, to make sure they could get into schools. Because we, we found a lot of them that had a, a lot of financial struggles trying to obtain uh, the, the college dream, if you will. Despite health challenges among many members, the Big Seven remains dedicated to uplifting the community. Just a group of guys in the right here from Barnwell County they have been doing what we do for over 30 years. And that's a blessing. So do y'all butt heads, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. Butt heads, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can yeah. see the scars. <laughs> One standout event organized by the group is the annual scholarship and awards banquet. To start, they gave students $300 at three local schools. Last year, we were able to give 17 $1,000 scholarships. So over the years, this program has really grown. Every dime that we've taken in uh, in, this, in this group, we've given it back out in some form or fashion to a senior citizen or to a, or a student. Its mission, one helping one to uplift all, sparks success stories. Have scholars return to inspire, speak, and even pay it forward by launching their own scholarships. We had a young man that was given a scholarship some years back, and he went to Vanderbilt, became a doctor. Mm -hmm. And he was one of our keynote speakers. And when he came back, I mean, his whole family was there to support him. He started a, a scholarship mm -hmm. in honor of their mother. President James Wallace reflects on how the organization helps seniors by hosting banquets and selecting a king and queen. And the members will elevate themselves as to be the king with these queen, um, king and queen. They would go cut their grass, take them shopping, take them out of eating, whatever, that was the job, you know how seniors are. But we did that for a number of years. 
Representative Lonnie Hosey recognized this group twice at the South Carolina State House. We all dedicated in, in what we do. We're not doing it for show. The Big Seven Association strives to make a positive impact in Barnwell County, which is why they are honored with this month's Black Affirmation Award. And congratulations, fellas. This year's banquet is going to be on February 24th at 6 p.m. over at Barnwell Elementary School. Tickets are $25. Tables are available. You can find more information on our website. And also, if you'd like to nominate someone for our Black Affirmation Award, you can do so on WJBF.com as well. Sherry has the check of your full forecast. Coming up next. The Live 5 for 6 mobile app. Download it today. Okay, we'll sleep comfortable tonight. Advanced. Technology. Over the years, thousands of people have gotten their hands on one. And who knows, you could be next. Win your very own Good Morning Augusta coffee mug at wjbf.com slash coffee club. Sponsored by Honda Cars of Aiken. The Very Vera Show, Thursdays at 1230 on News Channel 6. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live 5 for 6. After a beautiful sunny Saturday, now we've got the clouds starting to move in to set up for what will be a rainy Sunday afternoon. But right now, we still got a little bit of sunshine there peeking through on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam, but definitely got the clouds coming in as well. So that's kind of setting the scene for what you can expect over the next couple of hours. A little bit on the cooler side today, we're at 40 degrees here in Augusta, but some areas north of us, even cooler, closer to that freezing mark. Winds right now are pretty calm, coming from the east at three miles per hour, but those will also start showing out here later on this afternoon. So across the nation, look at our temperatures. Look at the gradient here on the east coast. We are 19 degrees up in Maine and in the 70s in Miami. So quite the difference there. But us, we're right there in the middle at 40 degrees and also some warmer temps behind it. As we flip over to our water vapor loop, you can tell those warmer temperatures are where the moisture is located. So remember, we had high pressure that was dominating our forecast yesterday and the drier air. But now we have our next weather maker pushing in, pushing that high pressure off to the north along with the drier air and building back behind it some moisture and that's why we have those clouds starting to move in this morning. Farmers forecast got the all clear for all counties there in the CSRA and we have some rain to add to the gauge today so that will be even better for our farmers but the winds are also something that we're keeping an eye on today. So what's down the road for us? Well today it's going to be a wet afternoon as those showers move in and also as that pressure gradient tightens also have some breezy conditions for today. You'll also notice it's a little bit cooler than it was yesterday. Then moving into Monday, those showers will be more scattered in nature, but the winds will definitely be there and we'll stick with the cool temperatures. But then once we move into Tuesday, we're back to sunshine. The winds start to calm down and we're looking at a pretty nice day. So our rain chances, we're looking at a 50% chance overall for today. And then those rains will linger into Monday, but then we've got the all clears. We're back to sunshine for the middle of the week. So when we say 50% chance of rain, I also want to point out that it is all based on your location. So these showers are going to be moving moving from the south, so our best chance of rain is going to be for our western and southern counties, but then as we move northward, you're going to see a less accumulation, and also those showers are going to move in later, so as the real estate people like to say, it's all about location, 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 so let's break it down to look at how the system is going to be moving in, so here we are sandwiched between that high pressure system and the low pressure system, so this morning you can see the clouds starting to build in as we march forward closer to the lunchtime hours. I think our southern line counties will start to see some sprinkles moving in there, and it will continue to swoop in from the south, so three o'clock, so as I said, location. So these guys here in the counties here, including Sparta, Sandersville, Wrightsville, Swainsboro, you'll start to see that rain falling mid-afternoon. And then the rest of us will start to join in on the fun later on in the afternoon into the evening hours. But notice our friends up in Saluda County, Edgefield County, and Aiken, you may not even see a drop of rain until later on in the evening hours. So just keep that in mind. I don't want you coming back and saying, hey, Sherry, you said it was going to rain today and we haven't seen a drop all about your location but again as we move into the evening hours i think it will kind of swoop up to our north so everyone will see a little bit of something
something. It's just all about the timing and where you are. Again, we'll see more scattered showers moving into Monday. The clouds will stick around for a little bit longer, and then we will see some clearing into the evening hours on Monday. And again, Tuesday, we'll have the all clear and back to sunshine there for us. So as far as rain totals go, you can definitely see that gradient there as I was talking about to our south. I think we could see anywhere from three quarters of an inch to an inch. But as we move northward, we're more in the trace amounts, maybe a tenth of an inch there for us. So it is definitely a strong gradient based on the location where you are. But one thing we can all count on is some wind. As we're looking at wind gusts up to 30, maybe even excess of 35 miles per hour on Monday. So we do have a lake wind advisory for all the counties there in gold. That is in effect from 4 o'clock this afternoon through 7 o'clock Tuesday morning. And again, gusts could be up to 35 miles per hour. So keep that in mind. So your 10-day forecast, we've got the rain moving in this afternoon. For most of us, to just remember, some will be later than others. So just hold tight and have that rain gear handy just in case. The showers will continue into Monday, and then we're back to sunshine on Tuesday. All right, sounds good to me. Forget the lemonade, how a family turned an old lemon into a cold hard cash. What's trending is next. WJBF, America's youngest governor, a conservative Republican, and boy, did she deliver. Great day in South Carolina. Nikki Haley will cut taxes, close the border, and defeat the Chinese communist threat. America's new chapter, strong and proud. I'm Nikki Haley, and I approve this message. Hey, y'all, welcome back. Time to take a look at what's trending. So a family in the UK was looking to sell... Hey, y'all, welcome back. Time to take a look at what's trending. So a family in the UK was looking to sell an old cabin when they discovered this inside, a 285-year-old lemon. Mm -hmm. The fruit had a message inscribed on it saying it was given to someone named Miss E. Baxter, the year 1739. So an auction house decided to sell the aged lemon and it ended up selling for $1,000. $780. What? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the auctioneer said that the cabinet sold for just 40 bucks. I question that. Okay. Mm. I've had produce in my fridge yeah. that in like <laughs> less than a month mm. it deteriorates down to, you know, a science fair project. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how, does, how does this even, I don't know. I don't know. And here I go looking for money in cabinets. <laughs> yeah, looking for fruit. Yeah. So you need to start carving just random days. Yeah, yeah. Somebody will find yeah. it. Like Sixteen fifty-four. <laughs> I wonder if someone just carved that, and maybe they did it a few years ago. Maybe. That's what I'm thinking. Hmm. I don't know. Somebody, if you know information on how you know lemons decomp, you know, I'd, I'd be interested. But yeah. I just, I don't know. I find that hard to believe. Hard to believe. Things that make you say, hmm. Mm, yeah. Well, coming up on Good Morning Augusta, it's National HIV AIDS Awareness Day this week, where experts say new infections are happening and how you can protect yourself. That's coming up, but first let's send to New York, where Wood Johnson is standing by. But we'll look at what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning, Wood. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the U.S. with its out. Here in the U.S., millions on alert for life-threatening and widespread flash flooding expected across parts of the West. Our weather team tracking it all. And countdown to kickoff, Mahomes versus Purdy. We're framing the big picture and high stakes for the two quarterbacks on and off the field ahead of Super Bowl 58. It's all ahead right here on GMA. At Tiles. At Tile Center, we deliver exquisite tile and stone, expert advice, innovations in materials, and extraordinary value. We've been bringing your visions to life since 1961. So, why Tile Center? Well, Tile Center, once again, is the winner of the Best of Home Award. Come see why for yourself at any of our locations, Augusta, Martinez, Statesboro, or Aiken, or online at TileCenter.com. Tile Center, your tile and stone experts. It's at 1230 on WJBF News Channel 6. With rent and expenses. Live from Television Park, this is Good Morning Augusta on WJBF News Channel 6. At this 730, thanks for staying with us. I am Sean Cabbage Stock. 
Sherry joins us again for another check of the forecast. No rain this morning, but rain in the afternoon around that's, 4, you said? That's right. It's looming. And we can already tell those clouds are starting to move into our southern Lyon counties. As we can see on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview Cam in Swainsboro, so quite the gloomy picture there as those clouds are moving in to our southern Lyon counties. And with the cloud cover, it keeps them a little bit warmer there. So 45 degrees in Swainsboro. And then up in the north where it's a little bit clearer, Saluda at 32 degrees and us in Augusta right there in the middle at 40 degrees. So a little bit chilly this morning, so definitely want to grab a jacket as you head out. Right now the winds aren't too bad. I would say anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour coming from the northeast right now. But they will definitely pick up as we move through the afternoon hours and into your Monday. We do have a lake wind advisory in effect from 4 o'clock this afternoon to 7 o'clock Tuesday morning for the counties there in gold. We could have wind gusts up to 35 miles per hour so keep that in mind so there it is there's that looming system that's starting to move eastward into our direction as that high pressure recedes and low pressure moves in you can see the cloud cover starting to pick up and then the shower will follow suit later on this afternoon. So your forecast at a glance this morning, we're going to see those clouds continue to build in and temperatures on the cooler side in those upper 30s to 40s for us. But then in the afternoon hours, we'll start to see the showers move in. They will be scattered in nature, mainly focused in our southern line counties and then moving northward. Temperatures only topping off in those low to mid 50s. So expect the clouds to continue moving in this morning and then it'll be a little wet moving on this afternoon and into your Monday. I'll have all the details on what you can expect for the end of the week and the week ahead all coming up. Sean? All uh, right, sounds good. Thank you. Well, Wednesday is National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day. It's an annual event highlighting the impact of HIV on black communities. The day focuses on getting the black community involved by emphasizing prevention, treatment, better education on HIV AIDS, as well as giving individuals the power to advocate for themselves. Health officials say that the South has the majority of new infections and is particularly occurring in black and Latino communities. PrEP is one of the most effective drugs to prevent HIV. We turn now to the inspiring journey of a woman born with HIV here in Georgia. Battling misconceptions, Kayla Quinley's openness challenges stigma. Diagnosed in the fourth grade, she faced isolation, but chose transparency and becoming an advocate. Empowered by connections at an HIV camp, she now works to educate and support others. You still got work tomorrow, you're gonna go to work. If you got kids, you still gotta go home and cook for them. You still gotta go home and clean. Like life continues to move even after an HIV diagnosis. So it is not the end of the world, but because there is so much stigma on it and how people perceive it, they really think that life is over. Like I'm about to die. I'm not gonna be able to love on my family and things like that anymore. And it's just not the case. And I'll share more on her story later this month. And invasion is coming to the CSR ring. No, we're not talking about aliens. Just wrestling. We'll take you to the ring. Details next. The Live Foundation Services will do a complete home inspection for free so you can put water back in its place. Schedule a free home inspection today. If you've been arrested for a DUI in Georgia, you may only have 30 days to protect your license or your privilege to drive here. Hi, I'm Tiffany Duncan of DUI Duncan, the DUI firm here in Augusta. Visit our website at duiduncan.com to see what we've done to help so many drivers. If you've been arrested for a DUI in Georgia, call me now for a free consultation. While the firm, of course, cannot guarantee results, we do guarantee hard work and fast action. Remember the name, DUI Duncan. Hey, y'all, welcome back. This month, the CSRA Championship Wrestling is invading Hepzibah High School. We got a few of the performers that you'll be able to see. Hey, y'all, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. No problem. So let's get right to it. I want each one of y'all to briefly introduce yourselves and tell me about your wrestling persona. Ladies first. <laughs> well, my name is Gracie Flores, and I wrestle fearless and... I like to play rough. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. In the right game. Yeah. Oh, in the right game, okay. <laughs> well, I'm Zeus. Zeus, okay. I'm a deity, and I think I'm above everybody, which I know I am. So oh, I'm always looking down on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you seem kind of friendly to me, but okay. Uh, I'm, don't take it. Oh, mm. uh, okay. <laughs> I'm Mike Ellison. I'm the guy that does the booking of these people, mm. and that's my, that's my main job for my wife. Ah, okay. 
I'm the swing man, Johnny Swinger. Uh, I didn't come up with a swing man. That's something the fans kind of gave me as a, as a moniker, and uh, if it's good with them, it's good with me. Uh, I've been wrestling for about 30 years now. <laughs> uh, actually started out here in Augusta with the old WCW World Championship Wrestling back in the mid-90s. Uh, we used to throw TV tapings here, and it's great to see that wrestling's still alive here in Augusta with CSRA and Mike Ellison's a, a longtime promoter, so he knows how to do it and how he does it right. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be a heck of a show coming up, and uh, we're all excited. Can't wait to get there. Yeah. Uh, so, what can fans expect when they get to the show? Uh, very similar to what they see on television. Uh, what, what you see on television in the big leagues of pro wrestling, you're going to see that. Uh, like you said, we got some great, great young up and coming talent. We also got some great legends coming from the old WWF. Former NWA World Champion Tommy Wildfire Rich won the World Championship right here in Augusta. Wow. In, he's 1981. Uh, you got the Barbarian, who's uh, besides Zeus here, he's a guy you'd walk the streets uh, anywhere with and not have to worry. Uh, one of the toughest wrestlers that ever lived. Uh, still at it. Uh, still very formidable in the ring, so he's going to be there. We got Little Papa Pump, uh, one of the midget wrestlers who, who once again, I, I know from years back, and uh, he's just a tremendous talent, tremendous athlete, and uh, puts on a heck of a show. If you've never seen the midgets before, it's, it's something to see. Uh, very special event. It's, it's going to be it's going to be a happening, so uh, it's one you don't want to miss. Yeah, and what does it take to put on something like this? Well, it takes a lot of, you know, getting used to putting talent together making sure who who you put together can perform great together mm. and you just you learn as you go yeah it's just a learning experience every time you, you put one together and you've been doing this for a while right uh, i've been messing with this stuff about 30 something years ah okay this is 80 like 85. Mm -hmm. so why'd you get into it well i was in high school i did amateur wrestling in high school then I started wrestling myself, and then I just decided to try my hand at promoting shows. And mm -hmm. oh. One thing led to another. Yeah, and here we are, the rest is history, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Exactly the way it goes. Yeah. So you think you're better than everybody, huh? I'm better than everybody. Ah, uh, okay. Yes, I do. So, so how would you come with that facade? Or, or is that just you in general? You're just better than I was born that way. I was born that way. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was born. I'm Zeus. Ah, uh, you're Zeus. Okay. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Ms. Flores, well, why'd you get into it? By accident, honestly. Yeah. I walked in with my friend. She was bringing food to her boyfriend. Oh, okay. And I saw them slamming each other around, and I was like, <laughs> I want in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how long ago was that? About five, six months ago. Ah, okay. So you're fairly new. Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Cool. Yes, sir. She kind of come up to our wrestling school. Mm -hmm. That's where she was talking about. They brought food to her boyfriend, and she started smiling, watching the guys wrestle. Yeah. Next thing you know, she says, "Can I try this?" Mm -hmm. and the rest is history. All right, the rest is history. Again. Do you um, go up against the guys as well, or just female? all the time? Oh, okay. All the time. I had my first female-only match just last week, right? Mm -hmm. So I've only been wrestling males this whole time. So is it a little different on um, males versus females? A little bit. Mm -hmm. um... oh, a little bit. Okay. So if um, someone's watching this interview right now, they want to get into wrestling, what advice would you give them? This is for anybody. Uh, have, have a backup plan. Uh, it's everybody's dream to be a TV star and be uh, performing in front of live audiences. And while everybody could get an opportunity to do it, what if the old timers used to say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right, right, right. Have, have something, you know, be involved, have some kind of skill outside of it. And then once you have that, man, just go for it. Uh, Mike provides a great opportunity here in Augusta for uh, people that are interested in trying to run a wrestling training camp. So uh, first and foremost, that's what you would have to do is he'd probably give you an opportunity to try out and then you can you, you can find out for yourself if it's something you'll find out right away if yeah. it's something you want. When someone starts slamming you around like she said, uh, you're going to know right away this is for me or it's not. Yeah. So that's the good part about it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be February 24th over at Hepzibah High School. Doors will open at 630 and bell time will be at 730. General admission tickets will be $20. And of course, we have all that information on WJBF.com.
Y'all, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Well, I guess it's time to go. <laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs> No warm air, no problem. Call Bailey's today. You voted on the results are in. The best moment chosen by you. It's live's viewers' choice show. Best Halloween costumes. Best celebrity walkout. And the best. Your favorite moments of 23. Look what I found at the Goodwill. And so much more. Thank you. Monday morning at 9 on News Channel 6. Brandsmark USA. USA. The WGBF Live Viper 6 Skyview Network is sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Low prices, big selection, and committed to quality customer service. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJBF Live Viper 6. Here's another shot on our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam where you can see the clouds are certainly thickening up, but we still got a little sunshine peeking through there at Doctor's Hospital. But definitely the cloud cover is increased a good bit, especially from yesterday, and it will continue to increase as we go through the morning hours and into the afternoon on your Sunday. In Augusta, we're at 40 degrees right now with winds nice and light coming from the east at 3 miles per hour. No issues with fog or visibility there for us. Looking across the southeast, how do we stack up? Well, it's a good bit cooler to our north Asheville, chilly at 28 degrees, but then in the sunshine state, they've got temps in the 60s and 70s, and back to our west, a little bit milder with temperatures in the 50s, so where you see those warmer temps. Also, you see the moisture looking at our water vapor loop. So we had high pressure that was in control of our forecast yesterday and that dry air associated with it. But as that high pushes to the north and the surface low moves in, we've got our next weather maker coming in and you can see that moisture associated with it. And that's why we're seeing those clouds start to increase this morning. Our farmers forecast, we've got the all clear all throughout the CSRA. No drought to worry about there. And the coming rain will be even more beneficial there. Also, though, we need to keep an eye on those winds as they will be quite breezy later on this afternoon and into your Monday. So what's down the road for us? Well, we've got these pending showers coming in later on this afternoon for your Sunday. It will be pretty breezy today and on the cooler side, but Monday is when the winds will really start to pick up as that pressure gradient tightens as that high pressure moves out and low pressure moves in. Also looking at some lingering scattered showers for your Monday and cool temperatures linger on. But then for Sunday, we've got the all clear. Winds will calm down and the sunshine will return. So speaking of those rain chances, we're looking at a 50% chance overall for showers later on today. Those will linger into Monday, but then again Tuesday, return to sunshine, and we'll have a nice dry, sunny stretch for the middle of the week. So when we say 50% chance, that's kind of an average of everywhere throughout the region, because remember, we got a big area to cover, but the bulk of this rain will be concentrated more so in the southwestern sec sector of the CSRA, and the more northern counties, you're going to see a less you know, less accumulation and it's going to be later before you see it. So keep that in mind as you go through the day today. If you're in northern Aiken County, Edgefield, Saluda, you may not see that rain until later on this evening and your accumulation is going to be on the lower side of things. So let's look at what we're talking about here with the future cast. So there's that low pressure system moving into southern Georgia right now and you see those clouds moving in and the showers are right behind it. So by lunchtime today, we will see some sprinkles start to move into our southern line counties, but then the bulk of the rain really starts to move in later in the afternoon and again check out where that is that's more of our southwestern counties here starting about three o'clock maybe from two to four or so but as that pushes in from the south we will see more counties start to pick up on some of that rain in the early afternoon hours moving into the evening but again if you notice they're kind of picking on Saluda and northern Edgefield County kind of get, getting left out of the bulk of the rain but then down in Emanuel County might see a good bit of rain maybe even a rumble of thunder or two and this continues throughout the the night on Sunday and it will become more scattered in nature as we go into the overnight hours and into Monday. Clouds will stick around for the bulk of the day Monday but then as we get into those evening hours we'll start to see the clouds clear out and make way for that sunshine that's moving in on Tuesday. So as far as accumulations like I said I think the bulk of it's going to be in our southwestern counties. I think three quarters of an inch is probably a good average for that neck of the woods but then again towards our north going to be more like trace amounts to maybe a couple hundredths of an inch. So definitely big variation in the rain accumulation depending on where you're located. But if you're excluded from the rain, you've definitely got the wind as we have a lake wind advisory that's in effect in all the gold counties there. That will be from 4 o'clock this afternoon through 7 o'clock Tuesday. And then back outside of our area, 
Virginia do have a general wind advisory that's in effect until 1 o'clock tomorrow. And with that, we're looking at wind gusts anywhere from 30 to 35 miles per hour. And again, most of that's going to come through later this afternoon into your Monday. So your 10-day forecast, we've got the rain moving in this afternoon, concentrated mainly in our southern Lyon counties, but we'll be moving northward later on into the evening hours and we'll linger scattered in nature for Monday, but then we're back to sunshine on Tuesday. That's your forecast and we'll be right back. The 10-day forecast on News Channel 6, brought to you by Murphy Family Insurance. Protect your family the way I protect mine with murphyfamilyinsurance.com. Hi, Suzanne Lilly Henny Michael here with Harbor Floors and More. For years we've been talking about our flooring and lighting gallery, but did you know we are also your one-stop shop for wallpaper? Today more than ever, wallpaper is the most popular home design element by combining both color and texture. So hardwood floors and more has you covered from floor to ceiling. And don't forget, we offer interest refinancing throughout our showroom and a military discount. Discover for yourself why hardwood floors and more has so much more in store for you. My dry eyes made it. in the way I smile, the way I talk to people. And when I left, I had brandy tea. Go ahead and smile. CG on the next Maine's report. How's it going with Wellstar? Why in the world are we building another medical school and dental school in other parts of the state? And how is telehealth coming along? Dr. David Hess. Now, WGBF sports coverage you can count on. It was opening weekend for our area D2 baseball teams, and the AU Jags and USC Aiken Pacers both look to bounce back from season opener losses. The Jags dropped their season opener 5-3 to three on Friday and lost game one of Saturday's doubleheader 8-6, to six, so they look to avoid the series sweep from West Georgia in game three. Getting the start on the mound was right-handed junior Grayson Hopkins. Top of the first. First batter sends it to deep left, and that's an easy out for Parker Ingram. And then the second batter for the Wolves also sends it to left, but a diving catch from Ingram earns the Jags the second out, and AU would get out of the inning unharmed. Bottom of the first, top of the order, there's Kyle Lodice at the dish. He hits this one down the third base line, and it takes a weird hop getting over the third baseman's head. He'll make it safely to first and keep going. A great start for the Jags with a leadoff double, and the dugout is loving it. Then a line drive to right from Kobe Ayala will bring Lodice home, and the Jags strike first, finishing out the first inning in the lead one to nothing. Ultimately, West Georgia rallied back and got the series sweep with an 8-2 win in Game 3, but the Jags will be back in action on Tuesday against Erskine College at 3 p.m. Over at USC Aiken, the Pacers dropped their season opener 16-4 on Friday and look to respond on Saturday, but they narrowly lost 8-6. They will take on the Braves for one final game of the series on Sunday at 1 p.m. Over on the hardwood, the South Carolina Gamecocks visited the Georgia Bulldogs. First half, 2.05 left. Michi Johnson hits the three-pointer. South Carolina down by two. 123 left. Colin Murray Boyles gets the layup to go. That'll cut Georgia's lead to two with the break. Second half, 8.04 left. Josh Gray with the dunk, and South Carolina taking the lead. They're up by six. Then with 4.16 left to play, B.J. Mack with the layup and one. South Carolina extends the lead to eight. 120 on the clock. Gray throws down another dunk, and that'll do it, folks. South Carolina gets the win, 72-62. to They'll be back in action on Tuesday against the Ole Miss Rebels. And finally, after a four-game losing streak, the Atlanta Hawks look to be on a four-game winning streak as they hosted Golden State. First quarter, Hawks down by three. Jalen Johnson throws it up, and Clint Capella throws it down. Hawks cut the deficit to one. Five seconds to go in the first. Trey Young with the buzzer beater nearly from the logo. Atlanta right back in it. Second quarter, Jalen Johnson feeds it to Bogey, who gives it right back to J.J. under the bucket. Hawks are down by six. So you know who we haven't talked about yet is DeJounte Murray. Here he is driving in the paint for the lay-in as he gives Atlanta the lead, 53-52. to And then he'll do it again in the key as he scores an easy two over Andrew Wiggins to extend the lead. And then he'll do it one more time just for good measure. D.J. drives, lays it in for six points in 30 seconds. Hawks up by five. Then in the third, Trey Young with a step back deep three to put the Hawks up by seven. And finally, in the fourth, with the game tied at 110, that's Ice Trey sinking it from beyond the arc to put the game away. Atlanta earns their fourth straight dub with a win over Golden State, 141 to 134. And that does it for morning sports. Teacher has changed so much.
much over the years, teachers have had to adapt from their lesson plans in the classroom to teaching virtually. But what hasn't changed is their love for their profession and their love for the children. Hi, I'm Marla Trust with Kroger. Teachers do an extraordinary job educating our children and preparing them for the future. Help us honor these special educators. If you know an outstanding teacher, nominate them for the Golden Apple Award at WJBF.com. Stormy. You can look up to you. Honoring Black History, we salute Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. by acknowledging those he inspired. Yolanda Renee King, the only grandchild of Dr. King. We dream a world where school is a safe place, free of fear. No violence spoken here. We dream a world where poverty is a memory. Honoring Black History. Honoring Black History is sponsored by Horizon Motor Coach, making memories every mile. So it's going to be a cloudy morning, but then the showers will start to move in this afternoon and will linger into Monday. Going to be on the cooler side in the 50s, but then we're back to sunshine on Tuesday and looking good for the middle of the week. All right. Sounds good to me. And thank you for joining the cool kids. We really appreciate it. You have a great week. We'll see you next weekend. And I love you, Mama.